Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Before we start this video, be sure to subscribe because I make new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any. So with that said, let's get on with the video. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room, all right? My t-shirt is amazing. <laughs> so, if you have never seen The Office, highly recommend it. Um, this man is David Brent, and he um, <laughs> is in the TV programme. So if you want to practice your English, The Office is a very good uh, TV show. Today, I am answering your questions about English. Why? Because I am an online English teacher with a TEFL and quite a bit of experience. So I'll try to help you as best as I can. Okay, the first question comes from Caracoan Spanish. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And they say, can I say I had two toasts for breakfast? That's a very, very good question. Now, interestingly enough, toast is what we call an uncountable noun. And there's a lot of reasons why it's an uncountable noun. It comes from the history of the English language. Don't worry so much about it. All you need to worry about is toast is uncountable. So we can't say two toasts. So with toast, we actually have to say two pieces of toast or two slices of toast. It's very complicated, it's very annoying. I wish we could just say two toasts, but we can't. We have to say two slices of toast or two pieces of toast. It's up to you. It's like if you go into a restaurant and say, can I have, um, can we have two cakes, please? They'd be like, two cakes? Really? One each? Two cakes? And you'd get like a huge, <laughs> big cake. But if you said, can we have two slices of cake or two pieces of cake, then they'd be like, of course, of course we can give you two pieces of cake. But two cakes would be a whole other thing. So to answer your question, unfortunately, we can't say two toasts, but we can say two pieces of toast or two slices of toast. The next question comes from Grey21111111 Wolf. And they ask, how can I practice the listening of others' accents, like Scottish and so on? I don't know where to find. Well, the internet is your oyster on that one. There is a really great website called, let me just check it, it's www.dialectsarchive.com and it is the International Dialects of English Archive. It's called IDEA. And on that website, they have recordings of people from everywhere, everywhere that has English speakers, they've got recordings of those people. So you can listen to Scottish people, you can listen to Welsh people, you can listen to Australian people, you can listen to people from New York, I don't know, wherever you want to listen to, it's on that website. So there's something. Um, there's also loads of great TV. You know, if you want to be entertained while you practice. If you want to listen to Scottish, you've got TV shows like Outlander, which is apparently very good. I've not seen it, but I've heard good things about it. If you want to listen to a bit of Birmingham, Peaky Blinders, of course. But you've also got websites like the Dialects Archive for things like that. Also just find celebrities that speak like that. You know, you've got loads of great Scottish celebrities like James McAvoy, Ewan McGregor. Just listen to them in interviews, that'll help. The next question comes from Tiffany and they ask when to use either or neither, bring or take, effect and effect. Okay, so let's start with effect and effect. So affect with an a in front of it is the verb, so to affect someone. Um, she affects the business because she's very good at her job. The effect with an e is the end result, so it's a noun effect. So she has a big effect on me or um, that film left a lasting effect on me. So it depends on whether it's a verb to affect someone or whether it's a noun the effect. Then bring or take depends on context. I can probably explain it best with an action. So, so this would be bring. I've brought this. I'm bringing this book. However, take would be this. Thank you. Thank you. So we bring the book and we take the book. 
There are contexts where both can work. For example, um, tomorrow I need to bring my lunch to school. But you could also say tomorrow I need to take my lunch to school. Sometimes it's, it's both, you know, take can also be the action of, hold on, let me show you again. <laughs> so take can also be, so can you take um, my child over there? I don't know, like, can you take da, 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 da. So it depends on the context. There are a lot of times where you can, where bring and take are interchangeable, but uh, for certain things, like if I take the book, that's got to be take. We couldn't say bring the book, that's take. So it depends on the context. And then we have either or neither. Now I could do a whole video on either or neither. So I will just give you a very quick explanation, um, but I might make a whole video about it one day. So the main difference is neither means not either. So it's a negative word. So we use neither for things like, um, neither one of my parents came to my graduation. <laughs> That's a lie, both of them did. Thank you, mum and dad. Um, if you want to emphasize that, that the negative, so neither one of my parents, my mother didn't come and my father didn't come, neither of them then we would use neither because it's negative. But either is like a choice between two options. So you can either have the steak or the fish. Either, which either. So it's less negative, it's a choice between two options. Next question comes from Zerlo Daniela um, and they say, I can't use the present perfect. Help please. Well, lucky for you, I just made a video about the present perfect. Check it out in the link down below. <laughs> The present perfect is not so hard to make, but the tricky thing about the present perfect is knowing when to use it. So I explain all of that in my video about the present perfect. So have a watch of that video, hope it helps. The next question comes from Eva and they say, how to stop translating in my mind while speaking English and really improve fluency? Now I can only speak from my experience as a language learner because I am learning French and the thing that is helping me with fluency and stopping translating in my mind is speaking to a native. There are plenty of websites online, things like italki, Cambly, where you can speak to a native in that language. It is the best, best, best way, I promise you. It, it, that's how we learn languages when we're babies. We learn it by hearing people speak the language and, and trying it and speaking. So you will learn so much quicker and you will stop translating in your head if you speak it with a native. So I can't recommend that enough. So try something like italki, Cambly, they're really good. The next question comes from ka.te, guessing maybe Kate, um, and they ask, what's the difference between study English and learn English? Um, it's all to do with context. <laughs> so learn English, I would say, for me, feels like the action of learning it new. So you're learning new things. So I am starting from the beginning and I am learning. I'm taking in new information. However, study for me feels a bit more like something you do when you already know the knowledge. So I learned the past tense in English, now I'm studying it. So I am um, just having a look and making sure I remember it. So learn is the beginning, study is the thing you do to remember, to do it again. But they're kind of interchangeable. You could say I'm studying English or you can say I'm learning English, both are fine. The next question comes from Essa Norms and they ask, why are there too many synonyms in English? <laughs> I know, it's crazy. We have a lot of synonyms, we have a lot of words, but it keeps it exciting, I guess. There's always something new to learn, but I understand it can be frustrating with all these different words, but the more you learn, the more free you are to fully express what it is you want to say, because you've got options in your head. You know, rather than having two words for something, you can have 17 different words to choose from. Amazing. You can express yourself in a really free way. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for your questions. If you have any more questions for me, you can send them to me on my Instagram, which is here. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one English lesson with me or my partner, the link for that is down below. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!